Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, please do come in. Our little place may not be a mansion, but it has its advantages. For one thing, it's thoroughly scare conditioned. The scream pipes are always in good working order, and we're very proud of our hot and cold running slaughter. And the rent's quite reasonable, too. We get a cut brain. <laughs> As the trunk murderer caught by the police and asked for the whereabouts of his latest victim murmured, it's in the bag. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Bird Song for a Murderer, was written by Lou Vittis and stars Ted Osborne in the role of Carl with Arlene Blackburn as Elaine. Well, you've had your warning. Whatever happens from now on, you asked for. Just be sure the family is provided for. And now to our happy little anecdote. Bird song for murder. My name is Carl Warner. An undistinguished sort of name, but I'm an undistinguished sort of man, so the name fits, I guess. I'm not a young man any longer, but I don't mind that. I wasn't very happy when I was young. Now, well, at least I'm not unhappy. And late at night, after Elaine has gone upstairs to bed, she's my wife. She's very pretty and younger than I am, and maybe I made a mistake in marrying her, but anyway, late at night, I go into the room where I keep the birds, and then, listening to them sing, I get as close to happiness as I can expect. I stay an hour, and then I cover their cages, and then they know it's time to sleep, and they sleep. Even on the stormiest of nights... And this was a stormy night. The birds were still. And I turned to go upstairs when... Someone knocked at the front door. It was late. We know very few people. We kept to ourselves mostly, Elaine and I, so... I worried a little when I opened the door. Yes? Mind if I come in, Mr. Warner? It's kind of damp out. Oh, uh, no, of course not. You seem to know me. I do, don't I? But I don't know you. My name is Brew, Chester Brew. Oh, uh, how do you do? Well, I'd do better if I was sitting down. I'm sorry. Uh, please. Thanks. Chester Brew. I still don't remember. Doesn't matter. What, uh, what did you want? Nice place you got here. Much nicer than Cragmont. Cragmount? Cragmount Asylum for the Insane. You work there? I used to work there. This is all very interesting. Funny but... thing happened just before I left. One of the inmates escaped. Very neat job. Was helped from the outside. I... Disappeared. Made quite a sensation. It must happen frequently. Not as frequently as all that. Besides, this baby was a homicidal lunatic. Homicidal. That's right. I don't see what all this has to do with me. I didn't say it had. There was one funny thing about this inmate. Was there? Loved canaries. Loved to listen to them sing. Psychiatrists at Cragmount found it very interesting. Birdsong was the only thing that kept the murderous impulse down. I... Uh, Mr. Warner, I'm out of work. That, uh, that's too bad. You're not doing badly. Nice house, furnishings... Didn't I hear canaries singing before I come into the house? Maybe, maybe you did. So, uh, 5,000 in the morning? No. I think yes. Otherwise, Cragmount will be happy to hear from me. 11 Crescent Place, room 2B in the morning. You can show me to the door now. Of, of course. Good night, Mr. Warner. Till we meet again? I watched him go into the blackness. And the blackness swallow him. And then I went back into the house. 
I stopped at the foot of the stairs leading to the bedrooms. And then I turned and went into the aviary. The birds were quiet. I thought for a moment of taking the covers off the cages and letting the birds sing. And then I thought that night it might be better if I didn't let the birds sing. Wait till morning, huh? I didn't expect. Wait. That knife. No! No! Oh, I. I shouldn't have let you. Surprise. Surprise. Oh, oh, oh. It had been a bad night. I couldn't have slept more than two or three hours. Fortunately, Elaine and I had separate rooms and at breakfast the next morning. She was fresh and young and beautiful. Carl. Hmm? Why are you staring at me in that funny way? Nothing. You really shouldn't read at meals. Oh, it's only the paper. So many exciting things happen. I can't wait till I get to them. Still. Oh, isn't that terrible? What is? A man was murdered last night. Not very far from here. In Crescent Place. Crescent Place? Huh. It's an odd name. Chester Brule. <coughs> Carl, the coffee cup. I'm sorry, but I... I wish you wouldn't read the paper. It says that his canary... He had a canary, Carl. Was singing when the landlady found the body. Oh, that's pathetic. Hey, Lady, I told you not to read that paper. Darling. Give it to me. <laughs> Carl... You're tearing the paper up. What's the matter? I, I'm, I'm nervous this morning. I don't remember you ever having been like this before. I told you I was nervous. Look, darling, why don't you go into the aviary? Listen to the birds for a while. You love them so, and they have such a nice effect on you. I went into the aviary, as she suggested, and listened to the birds. It was quite a little while before I stopped trembling. Carl. Yes, dear. Come into the kitchen. All right. I've been washing the breakfast dishes, darling, and found this among them. The carving knife. Hmm, isn't that funny? And, and besides, look at it. The blade's all covered with brown stains. I see. Sure, I washed it after dinner last night. Did did you use it for anything? No, darling. Give it to me. I'll wash it now. Oh, I can do it. I just wondered. Oh, the door. Will you... No, give me the knife. You answer the door. But... I said you answer the door. Well, all right, but there's nothing to shout about. I don't know what's the matter with you this morning. I washed the knife. Quickly but carefully. Very quickly. But very carefully. It didn't take long. The... The stains hadn't hardened much. The brown stains... Carl? Yes? Someone to see you, a man. What does he want? Well, he didn't say, except that it was important. I'll go see him. He said he's a lieutenant from the police. There are 17 steps between the kitchen and our living room. I know, because I counted them while I was walking to see Lieutenant Gregg of the police. 17 steps to make my face. Polite, relaxed, smiling... But would I be able to hide the trembling of my hands? You're Lieutenant Gregg. My wife said you wanted to see me. That's right. <laughs> Have I been parking in the wrong place again? I'm afraid this isn't so simple. Oh, you're beginning to frighten me. What is it about? Murder. Oh? Mr. Warner, did you know a man named Chester Brule? Chester Brule? Well, I, I can't say offhand. I've, I've such a bad memory for names. I, I may or may not. Why? He's the man who was murdered last night. Well, if I'd murdered him, I'd certainly remember his name. Of course, of course. You understand this just routine. You see, we found your name and address in Brule's address book. I see. We thought you might be able to help us. The fact that my name was in his address book doesn't prove, prove that... anything? Of course not. 
Would the fact that Brule used to be an attendant in an insane asylum mean anything to you? Why should it mean anything to me? Well, I didn't say it should, Mr. Warner. I just Well, it doesn't. Well, I guess that's that. Sorry to have bothered you, but we have to check every possible lead. I, uh, I understand. I'll be going along now. Well, let me take you to the door. Funny thing, there was a birdcage in Brule's room with a canary in it, singing its head off. Oh? Well, lots of people are fond of canaries. Oh, sure, sure. What was funny about it is that Brule's landlady swear Brule never had a bird. That, uh, that is funny. Way looks to kill a knife, Brule, and then left the cage and the bird in it behind him. Doesn't make any sense unless you figure the guy who killed Brule was insane. Lieutenant Gregg of the police walked down the front path across the sidewalk to a small black car and drove away. I shut the front door. The birds had been quiet, but the slam of the door maybe started them off. And I knew that somehow I would have to get the cage and the bird in it out of Rue's room. I didn't know how I'd do it, but I'd do it. No matter how insane it was. It was dark when I got the present place. Dark on a lonely street. There was no one in front of the house. Nothing to show that a man had died inside, horribly, the night before. Blood welling from his throat. The door was open. There was a dim light in the vestibule, leaving the stairs beyond in darkness. I went up to them, to the second floor. There was no one in the corridor. The door of 2B opened. And I went in. There was no light. The moon cast a pale glimmer over the room and... Someone in a chair near the window. For a moment I thought it was Brule. But there was no blood. And then I realized... It was a policeman in uniform asleep. The cage was near the sleeping man... Would his sleep be sound enough? I reached out, lifted the cage, reached the door, and closed it. Oh, I was safe. That... That would be a problem. I should have killed it instead. I left it at a pet shop where I'd gone and done business once, and then went home. Carl? Yes? Oh, I'm so glad you're home, dear. That Lieutenant Gregg is here again. He's in the bird room, dear. The bird room? Yes. I, I was in there with him for a while, but then I, I couldn't stand all the noise. <laughs> Excuse me, Carl, but... You know I don't like their singing. Why did you take him to the bird room? Well, he asked me to. All right. I'll go in there now. Well, don't let him keep you very long, darling. You're not well. I'll try not to let him keep me. Lieutenant Gregg. Hello, Mr. Warner. Quite a collection of canaries you got here. Yes, I have. You like them, huh? I wouldn't be likely to keep them otherwise, would I? Yeah, I suppose not. Were you home all last night? Of course. That is still about uh, Chester Brule's murder. Uh-huh. Your wife and you sleep in the same room, huh? That's none of your... No. More convenient that way. Only trouble is she couldn't swear to your being around all night. Why, uh... Why should she have to? No reason at all, just the way a policeman's mind works. Funny thing happened a little while ago. Somebody walked into Brule's room and walked right out again with that birdcage. Weren't the police guarding the room? Mm, supposed to be, but we slipped up. Say, uh, remember my mentioning I thought the man who'd killed Brule and left the birdcage behind him must be insane? You did say something of the sort? Yep. 
And then there's the fact that Brule used to work with insane people. Begins to mesh, huh? I know very little about police work. Well, I hope I'm not boring you. Anyway, it occurs to me maybe I'd better take a trip up to Cragmount. I suppose going to asylums or any place else is a part of your job. Sure, sure. Oh, did I mention Cragmount was an asylum? Why, you must have. Yeah. That is yeah, a... yeah. I'll run up there and I wouldn't be surprised if I get all the answers. What do you think? I think I'm going to... Carl, I... Oh. What is it, Elaine? Well, it is... It, it's so late. I thought... I can take a hint, Mrs. Warner. Don't bother showing me the door. Right. Well, he seems like a very nice man. He... Carl, stop it. What? That stare. Uh, if I didn't know you so well, I'd say you were... We're going mad. Go to bed, Elaine. All right, darling. Uh, oh, Carl, look. Look at what? Through the window. The garden. Lieutenant Gregg didn't go away. He's down there. Get away from the window. Go to bed. Well, I, I'm going. He looks as if he's waiting down there for something. For what, Carl? I knew what he was waiting for. Elaine went to bed. To sleep. I went to my room. I didn't put the lights on. From my window, I could see him. It was very still in the house and outside. I went away from the window. Sat down. I knew I mustn't go to sleep. Things happen when you sleep. Terrible things. But I hadn't slept well the night before. Not well at all. And there'd been the strain of the day. It was night now. And dark. And still. Terribly still. Gargan? Gargan? <laughs> Right. It was right. Only it wasn't Gargan. I'm cold. Cold. Oh, it's such a lovely morning, Carl. Lovely. I looked for Lieutenant Gregg as soon as I got up. He wasn't in the garden anymore. He must have got tired, gone home, or... Mm. Back to headquarters, uh, wherever policemen go. Oh, dear, that's the Swenson's dog. And he got into our garden again. I'll have to get him out. Elaine, don't. Darling, he'll dig up all the flowers looking for bones. I'd better go. Elaine! Maybe, maybe he won't be there. Maybe somehow the truth isn't the truth and I'm not... <coughs> Elaine, where are you? Oh, oh, under the tree. Here. What? Look, Lieutenant Craig. His throat. Oh. Come inside. All right. The kitchen. Oh. Carl, where are you going? The kitchen. Well, what are you doing? The drawer, silverware. Yes. Yes, it's here. The carving knife. That's right. Well, I thought you washed it last night. I guess you didn't. You'd be wrong. I did wash it last night. The stains are still there. The brown stains. These are fresh ones. Uh, Elaine, get out of my way. Uh, I've got to go to the bird room. Oh, God. Please don't go away from me. Go! I was holding the carving knife in my hand. I started to put it down. And then I held onto it anyway. It would make taking the covers off the cages awkward, but I held onto it anyway. The birds were still. They'd remain still. Unless I took the covers off. Elaine. Carl, you must tell me. What's wrong? Don't come any closer. But you... Elaine, please. Not any closer. You... You've got that knife in your hand. Yes. The one with the brown stains. Oh, Carl. Shh, don't say anything. Carl, the night before last... Elaine. Don't ask questions. 
That's dangerous. You were out of the house? No. Last night, when Lieutenant Gregg was killed... I was asleep. You have the knife, Carl? Yes. Give it to me. No. Please, Carl. No, stay where you are. All right. You may keep the knife. Because... Look, Carl. A revolver. Yes. Lieutenant Gregg's revolver. I looked at her. There was a flush on her cheek. She was fresh and young and very beautiful and quite insane. Elaine, give that to me. Oh, no. No, I took it from Lieutenant Gregg last night. After he stopped crying. He always cry when you... Elaine. I didn't like the way you'd been looking at me, Carl. You were thinking bad things about me. You were thinking that maybe you'd have to send me back to Craigmount. I wasn't. You were, Carl. I knew you were. After Chester Bull died. Elaine. Stop where you are. All right, Keep but... your hand away from the birdcage. Don't pull the covers up! Don't! Uh, 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 Carl. Carl, I've hurt you. No, never mind. But I, I didn't want to. Oh, Carl. Are you going to cry? Like the others? I'll try not to. Because... I wouldn't like that. I know. I'm sorry I hurt you. Doesn't matter. It was my fault. I loved you too well. I really killed those others. Not you, my dear. That's a very silly thing to say. And I'll become quite angry. I am quite angry! Carl, Carl, you silly. You pull the covers off the cage. Carl. Oh, Carl, I'm speaking to you. Those, those birds, I don't like them. I, I... Carl? Oh. Oh, poor Carl. He's dead. I loved him. Now he's dead. But anyway, he didn't cry. He didn't cry. Well, there it is. The story of a couple of lovebirds who, instead of billing and cooing, went in for killing and shooting. Of course, it was all little Elaine's idea. All Carl did was cover up. Too bad he got shot for it. However, the police would have nabbed him for murder anyway. So you could say he paid a high cover charge. <laughs> Be with us again next week at this same time for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This program was originally heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.